almost natural to humans. Our brains are naturally wired to the spoken language. However, to reading it is not. As per the studies, reading is an acquired skill for which the human brain is not yet evolved. Reading begins with being a perpetual learner, but it needs to go beyond this with the sole cognitive focus on visual recognition and text decoding. Comprehension is the key to the process. Reading with meaning is a core requirement in foundational years. Children's literature gives children that exposure. There are not enough good quality, authentic, diverse and age appropriate books available for early readers, especially in local and regional languages. This brings us to the larger need for availability of good children's literature. Children's books are a fast growing segment in India and the children's publishing industry is seeing 14 to 18 percent growth every year. However, majority of the available literature is in English and most of what is available is a reproduced content or translated western classics. Very few books have original stories with Indian context and rich layered illustrations and engaging content. There are only a handful of publishers in India that focus on quality children's literature publishing in Indian languages. While India has a large school going population with near universal enrollment in primary schools, availability and access to quality literature in children's home language have been far from adequate. Hi, I am Purnima and I am going to be your host for the show Fireside Chat heads together today. And today on the show, we have Geeta Dharam Rajanji. Um, Geeta Dharam Rajanji is a writer, social entrepreneur, and educationist, an award winning writer for children and adults. She has over 30 years of professional experience, having served at the India Today group of companies, the University of Pennsylvania, and INTAC before starting Katha in 1988. She was the honorary chairperson of the National Bal Bhavan Jawaharlal Nehru's dream institution for children in India across social and economic divides. Besides two lifetime achievement and two Rotary Awards, Geetaji has received the Millennium Alliance Frugal Innovator Award from the Government of India and US in 2014. She was awarded the Business Standard Entrepreneur of the Year Award in 2018 and the Satpal Nithil Award in 2020. In 2012, she was awarded the Padam Shri for her work in literature and education. Thank you Geeta Ji for being here today with us. Um, I would also like to tell our audience that Geeta Ji's sense of organizational design and innovation has led her to create Katha's unique story. The pedagogy and earth-friendly curriculum she designed and developed have enabled children to become readers and leaders. She currently serves as the president and board chair at Katha. So, Geeta Ji, you've created such a fabulous organization, Katha. So, you know, and uh, we could not have a better person than you to really talk about children literature. Thank you. I hope I do justice to whatever you absolutely, want from me. Absolutely, absolutely. So, I would like to ask you my first question. Uh, why stories and storytelling is important for early readers? Um, and what learning potential does children's literature hold? Well, if you ask me, story is like life in a dream. Mm -hmm. And uh, dreams and magic, I think, you know, live forever. And stories live forever when they are well written. Mm -hmm. So when you look at stories, they become a very intrinsic part of our life. Mm -hmm. We all live on stories. We need stories, whether we are standing at the bus stop, whether we are on a chartered bus, or we are listening to our grandparents or, you know, 
mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. stories. Yeah. I remember my growing up used to be full of stories. Mm -hmm. I remember sitting on my grandfather's uh, belly, you know, he had a big belly and mm -hmm. I used to sit on him and, and he would tell a story and he would be laughing and I'll be laughing with him <laughs> and going up and down, up and down with him. So, you know, story is associated with joy, it's associated with laughter, it's associated with memories. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I think when I look at the story and I say, what is the story today for our children? Mm -hmm. I would say it's not just the fun and the, the joy that story gives, mm -hmm. but it's also the critical thinking, the curiosity that, you know, it builds in children. Yeah. Because children are always saying, why, what, how? Why did this happen? Why is she opening the door? She shouldn't be opening the door now because there's something behind it. Mm -hmm. So there is this anticipation and there is the curiosity that is built in children. And because of the curiosity, there's a creativity. Mm -hmm. So we can bring them from that into being creative and being able to create their own stories. Mm -hmm. And today mm -hmm. in the 21st century, that becomes the biggest thing that you want, a storytelling ability. And mainly from story, I think what we get is the critical thinking mm -hmm. or a problem solving because right. every good story solves a problem. Mm -hmm. By the time you come to the end of it, in a short story, mm -hmm. it is very visible. Mm -hmm. In a novel, there are multiple levels at which you solve problems. There are the highs and the lows, the climax, the anticlimax. But we all solve problems over there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. for life, I think, you know, we can't do without story. So I don't know why. We don't have more stories mm -hmm. in our country mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. in a land of stories. Yeah, I mean, you said it so well, reading for joy and, you know, uh, it's so important. Do you think we have enough awareness in our community on the reading uh, for joy, given that, you know, the new education policy also talks about uh, the importance of libraries, the quality reading material. So, uh, do you think that there is enough importance um, that people are aware of on reading of, for joy? See, Purnima, I would like to ask what is joy, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Because <coughs> joy is not something that comes from something that's forced on you. Yeah. Joy comes mm -hmm. because I'm excited about something, I want to do something and I go ahead and I do it. So, uh, a sudden game, a sudden bird that I see flying outside, a sudden wave that crashes into me mm -hmm. and I'm taken by surprise. That is joy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But what we have done in India, because we come from an oral tradition mm -hmm. and so our listening power, the Shravana Shakti was always much better mm -hmm. than our power to read. Yeah. So, when we move from, you know, uh, from uh, an oral tradition into a written tradition, we went wholesale with the mm -hmm. written, mm -hmm. which means that we never gave our children an opportunity to say mm -hmm. that j the joy which goes with story mm -hmm. is invested in the book. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So children thought that the story was different and the book was different mm -hmm. and there was no joy in the book mm -hmm. because the book was associated with school. It was associated yeah. with, you know, syllabi, it was associated with tests and exams. and So the book always became a thing of dread for children, mm -hmm. while the story was something of joy. Yeah. So when you said that, you know, you don't bring the book into the classroom and mm -hmm. it is a textbook that you bring into the classroom. Right. That's why Katha started with the untextbooks. We said that we don't want a textbook, you want mm -hmm. an untextbook. And with the untextbook, the children are finding that, you know, okay, I can still enjoy. Yeah story has to be authentic like you had said earlier mm -hmm. it has to have an authenticity yeah when you write for grammar you write for syntax you're not mm -hmm. writing a story yeah so it's not a true story absolutely okay. so it does not excite the child mm -hmm. to read it mm -hmm. so i think if you ask why in our country we are not reading mm -hmm. i would say maybe it is a fault of all of us who are educators mm -hmm. we have said that the only gateway mm -hmm. to learning is through reading and writing. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. While knowledge creation is what education is all about. It's mm -hmm. not about reading and see, I I can have this mug with me, mm -hmm. or I could have a glass with me, or I could have a gold jug with me. But what I put into it is what is important. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we've said this is the textbook, mm -hmm. and whatever I put into it is going to be governed by this cover that I'm mm -hmm. giving it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I feel somewhere if we had said the gateway is not reading mm -hmm. to education, but it is knowledge to education, mm -hmm. then I think, you know, all the work that uh, 
people like us, you know, room to read, Kata, and so many. I mean, India is so fortunate to have so many nonprofits working in this field. I think, you know, then I think we would be able to bring the child more easily into reading because we would have the joy of reading, as you mm -hmm. were mentioning. Mm -hmm. And I started Kata to enhance the joy of reading right. in 1988. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so the joy of reading will be there when you are not saying that it is a forced activity mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. reading becomes something the child does on her own sure. and mm -hmm. reading is not the gateway to education mm -hmm. and to mm -hmm. learning. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I think. No, absolutely <laughs> and I'm very sure uh, with our national education policy mandating it, uh, there will be enough good quality of books available in the vibrant libraries um, of our country so as children can really read for joy. Well, I don't know about that. I hope it happens, yes, but I'm not too sure. About that. <laughs> so this brings me to my next question. The National Education Policy 2020 talks at length about three language formula. So, you know, education in local language, which is the mother tongue uh, and the exposure to and promotion of Indian languages. And it has rightly emphasized that local languages or home language learning, especially in early years to ensure uh, children are able to understand what they read. So, um, you know, however, there is not much good quality literature in regional and tribal language. And I think we've been talking about it for such a long time that, you know, the child who speaks at home has a very different language vis-a-vis when they get into the school, the medium of instruction is very different and the spoken language around them is very different. So, um, you know, how can we have relevant and contextual story books in local and tribal languages, uh, given there does not seem to be a market for it? Yes, the demand and supply yeah. is mm -hmm. a major issue for big publishers, I mm -hmm. think. But what I really feel is that, you know, when you put the child in front, Many times we put the uh, horse behind the cart. Mm -hmm. We put the cart in front. Mm -hmm. And we say that, you know, uh, making money, the finance, is the first thing that we have to look at. Yeah. But supposing we put the social uh, need in front, mm -hmm. and which is what, you know, in Europe or any of the other countries, the government does. Mm -hmm. The government ensures that the uh, publisher is able to publish good fiction or mm -hmm. good literature. Mm -hmm. So that it can be reach the child. Okay, mm -hmm. in India we've not had such policies at all. But when I'm looking at, you know, why don't we read? Why don't we have good uh, literature? It depends on readers and mm -hmm. it depends on writers. Mm -hmm. I think when you have good readers, you create good writers. Right. And when you have good readers, cr writers, you create good readers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the thing, the both of them go together and the publisher is just a small little part of it, the mm -hmm. invisible part of this relationship between the reader and the writer. Mm -hmm. Invariably what happens is our writers are not writing for children today because most of them who are able to write, mm -hmm. because we come from an oral tradition, yeah. most of our adults cannot really read and write that much. Mm -hmm. Okay, They can't be creative in a written medium. They are creative in a spoken medium. Yeah. We don't mm -hmm. have a way of bringing the spoken into the written. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. So when you don't have proper writers, then they are mostly coming in from urban areas. Now the urban area story becomes a very, very metro-ish kind of an yeah. activity. So you're finding that, you know, many of the stories don't touch the heart of the child. And if it doesn't touch the heart, if it doesn't touch my emotion, mm -hmm. as we say, you know, there are only two things that move us, you know, the two levers are emotion and a bunny. Mm -hmm. So if I don't get the emotion, then I have to have only the bunny to look after. <laughs> but if I can have the emotion part of it mm -hmm. and I'm touching the child, mm -hmm. the money will come no normally sure. and naturally. Yeah. Yeah. So I would like to look at, you know, the kind of writing we are doing mm -hmm. and uh, uh, recently, Kata has started working with, you know, rural uh, Adivasi, Dalit and Dalit Muslim mm -hmm, children. Mm -hmm. um, and I find that, you know, because of the COVID, many of our children are not reading. Mm -hmm. So when you look at, say, 100 children, there mm -hmm. are about maybe 10 children who can read uh, at grade level. Mm -hmm. And there would be about 20 children who are not able to read at grade level at all. And there are this 60, 70 percent who are in the middle who can just count the words, look at the matra, look at the word and read slowly. Okay, mm -hmm. So they are not reading anything at all. Mm -hmm. If the story had been there and we had valorized 
knowledge over reading, they mm -hmm. would have come into reading, the market would have developed and the supply would have kept the thing going because mm -hmm. the demand would be there. Yeah. Somewhere I think as publishers, we always put the cart before the horse, I think. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I did know. I answer your question at no, all? No, it does and you know, it's so important, you actually said it so well. It's so important that um, how we are making sure that, you know, the language that I understand, the the culture that I understand, it touches me instead of what is just written for the heck of it. Yes. yes. So, so a translation, if it is done properly, a literary translation mm -hmm. is very different from a translation. Many yeah. times we don't have literary translators. Mm -hmm. So when a story is written and it's recently we translated some of our books into Mundari for instance mm -hmm. because we have a center in Jharkhand mm -hmm. and I find that children over there are not able to read in Hindi mm -hmm. and that is the because as you said the school language now yeah. we only have some 30 odd school languages for the 400 and odd languages that people speak and joke yeah. in and trade in. Absolutely. So there is a huge gap as you had said between the home language and the and school the language. School language yeah and storybooks are now not coming in the home language as much as they should because we lack the writers mm -hmm. over there so we have to i think technology should help us i think to make to bridge this gap i hope let's hope so let's yes. hope so so you've elaborated on the idea of uh, reading uh, and you know the kind of cultural practice that we should be making so as an educator are we engaged in a project of cultural transformation um you know, should we be attempting to change people's culture? Uh, why can't we just leave the culture alone and simply provide the skills? I mean, because, you know, there is this huge dilemma about skills, habit, the kind of, uh, you know, material that we are giving. So what's your opinion on it? And these are multiple questions that I've thrown on you. But yes. yeah. <laughs> Let me pick up the main thing, you know, yes. are we looking at cultural transformation? I, I would say that, you know, as publishers and as teachers, mm -hmm. there's no such thing as apolitical. Mm -hmm. We are mm -hmm. all political animals because yeah. we are in the space of education and mm -hmm. education is a political activity. Mm -hmm. So I believe that, you know, if we are not looking at change, mm -hmm. because education is that space for change. Mm -hmm. We are looking at how we can change stereotypes. We have so many in our country. If you're looking at the cultural stereotypes, you're looking at caste, class, color, mm -hmm. creed, mm -hmm. everything is a stereotype and yeah. that's debilitating. Supposing mm -hmm. we can say that, you know, as publishers and as teachers, we are changing that culture, mm -hmm. not in the face change, but mm -hmm. through, uh, you know, through the lesson plans, through discussions, mm -hmm. through bringing the children into understanding mm -hmm. that there is a stereotype that I want to change, mm -hmm. then why not? I would. I would want every teacher to be a cultural change agent. I would mm -hmm. want every publisher to be a cultural change agent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, skills are not enough. Skills are okay as as something which like the glass which is there. So I can say okay read and write so I can take the cultural practice across and I yeah. can change things for my mm -hmm. child. I don't want my child to live in a land which is so divided and mm -hmm. so uh, becoming so monocultural. I don't want that. I want the vibrancy for my children mm -hmm. and that is what they deserve. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, sorry, but I want them, I want all of us to be cultural change agents. Change makers. Yes, absolutely. Makers. Yes, um, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, what do you think? Do we currently have a reading culture in the country? I mean, what's your take on it? Uh, that needs some shift. Um, you know, what is that we all together can do? I think it depends on the kind of child that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at a child who's coming from a middle class, upper middle class, mm -hmm. a more elite kind of a background, mm -hmm. yes, maybe the child is not reading today. Mm -hmm. But if you're looking at a child who is just coming into learning, a child mm -hmm. from a non-literate family mm -hmm. and is not getting enough books, is not getting enough things. Like for instance, when I had been to Bihar some years ago, mm -hmm. the only thing that they could get were these small uh, cinema songs, you know, mm -hmm. which were written. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the writing was on the hoarding. Mm -hmm. We are not looking at libraries because the school libraries are all kept inside boxes and you hand it over from one principal or one teacher to another, to another because then you have to count it, you have a stock taking, you have all kinds of 
stupid rules which make it difficult for parents. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at, you know, a reading culture and how mm -hmm. does it get created? It gets created in a book rich environment. Mm -hmm. Uh, without books, how can you have reading? Right. But when you look at government uh, uh, schools, which are, you know, which get the bulk of our children going to them, we find that, you know, many times because of the very cumbersome rules that we have, the red tape that we have, a headmaster hands over a box of, you know, very, very nicely locked books to the totally. next headmaster and they, nobody's opened it in between. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to be as a headmaster responsible for any book that is lost. So I don't use them at all. So. I remember some time ago when I had gone into Bihar, the, the, the only thing that the children had were, you know, these little music, uh, you know, little books for 40 paisa and 2 rupees, 3 rupees kind of a little book on bad paper and, uh, you know, the hoardings that were up for as advertisements. So that is what they are doing. So getting the child as a consumer becomes mm -hmm. more important in our country today than bringing the child into reading and into cultural changes right. in reading. Okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So how do we change that? Can we sort of uh, say that children have to read? Can they have, uh, have a detrimental effect on children or will it have a positive effect on children? Right. Mm -hmm. Don't no child likes to do what you have to do. We mm -hmm. all know that. Mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. so reading has to be for joy as we said in the beginning. So if we say that, then I would say that A, we need to have more books in the languages that they can read in. We need to have books that are, you know, very beautifully developed for them. Many times I'm told in Qatar, Das rupiah ke kuch karo. You know, don't do it for, you know, don't make it expensive. But we know that, you know, I can give my children a scrappy book to read and mm -hmm. they will read it. But I cannot give a child who has to be, you know, induced into reading and enticed right. into reading. Right. I can't give them a book which is not looking good, mm -hmm. which does not have good uh, illustration, right. which has such bad paper yeah. that the ink is just getting sucked into the paper. I, I can't do these mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. But invariably that's what happens. So if you're poor, you get poor quality publishing and that does not get you into reading. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the third thing is our parents are not reading. Okay. Ah. Mm -hmm. Our teachers, there's a difference between a reading teacher and a teacher who reads. Mm -hmm. We have neither. We don't have reading teachers because we think reading is a function of all language teachers. Mm -hmm. It's not. Reading is something that you have to give, like you said. The brain has a language uh, part in the brain, mm -hmm. which is only a single part in the brain till the age of seven or eight. Mm -hmm. When the brain is growing fur furiously, okay, after that it becomes two. And so whatever language I'm learning, it, go, it has to be processed by two parts of my brain rather than one part. Mm -hmm. So till the age of eight, which means a, a child in third standard or third grade is able to read anything that you give, mm -hmm. okay, in any language, can right. absorb any language, okay. But we are not giving it at that point. Mm -hmm. We don't have early learning in our country. Right. We have not stressed on it. And even when you stress on it, we've had, you know, our balwadis for such a long time, mm -hmm. but we've not actually made it functional. Yeah. So it's been more a place for feeding children rather than feeding the brain of the children. So it's Absolutely. the stomach vis-a-vis -vis the brain. brain. So we've not really looked at the brain and what is going to be the future of India. Mm -hmm. and, and no government has looked at the future of India. Mm -hmm. So if you are looking at the future of India, I would say create more book rich environments have more books that the child would enjoy reading, have good quality publishing for children, mm -hmm. bring parents, have workshops for their parents. Mm -hmm. We all do workshops with teachers. Why not workshops with parents? parents? So that there is a habit which is continued into the family and train the children to be uh, reader leaders, as we say. Mm -hmm. They become the commun communicators for mm -hmm. the community. Right. So when you train children to be the communicators for community, mm -hmm. I'll f I think that, you know, this reading culture mm -hmm. can change. And if we say that reading is not the gateway to knowledge and is not the gateway to education, it is knowledge and we can give knowledge in a plethora of ways. There are so many exciting ways, games, toys, uh, anything that they see, a game that they can play with, you know, words that they are saying. Yeah. I think any of those things. For instance, in Qatar now, we are telling our children that, you know, they can do their uh, interviews because they do a lot of interviews of people in the uh, in the local 
traditional knowledge mm -hmm. uh, circles. Mm -hmm. So when they are doing the thing, it's normally been something to read and write. So you have to write the questions and then you have to write the answers and then you have to print it. So we have a publishing center in our magic labs. They're called the Qatar Magic Labs. Mm -hmm. But it is an audio publishing that we do, a video publishing that mm -hmm. we do, mm -hmm. which means that we are still looking at knowledge of the child rather than the reading ability of the child. I mm -hmm. don't want them to read. And we find that within a month or within three months, every child wants to read. Mm -hmm. They know there's some mystery behind the book, Yes. within the covers of the book. They know there's something very exciting mm -hmm. because the teacher is reading something, the mentor is reading something. And that Absolutely. is something that is, I want to read. Okay. so. They on their own, without any stress, when they go and open a book, mm -hmm. that is sustainable. And right. that is something that's going to last. No, okay. absolutely. So you create so interest. You create interest first and then you sort of say, you have to. We yeah. don't say you have to. You just leave the child do it on her own. Absolutely. You give learning the way the child wants to learn mm -hmm. and not the, just the way the teachers want to teach. If we can shift it to the way in which children want to learn, mm -hmm. I think the magic will start happening. Absolutely. Thank <laughs> you so much. It was lovely interacting with you. And such an insightful discussion today. Geeta Ji talked so beautifully about that how as adults, we need to change our mindset and we need to make this shift in ourselves to see that we are making the children interested in the story before they start reading and reading for joy. Uh, thank you so much, Geeta Ji. It was lovely having you it here. It was lovely being with you, Purnima. Thank Purnima. you so much. You are a great host. Thank, thank you. you.